much. <laughs> it's an age-old problem. Do you dress to blend in with the crowd or to stand out? If you choose to stand out, you can get a lot of hostile reactions from conventional people. Well, I mean, most of them, they just look at us because, I mean, they, they sort of, they just can't take it. It blows their tiny little mind to see something different, you know. They ain't, they ain't got the ball to sort of change themselves, and you know? so they just sort of, you know, it just blows their mind. Oh, they banned us from banned well. Every pub down here we're not allowed. Every pub in King's you know, Every you pub know near, um, You know near the marquee, all round Sorrow, banned from every pub down here nearly. Why is that? I don't, don't know. Like the we call I just trouble. got chucked out of the Chelsea drugstore. Yeah, that's, that's the in. word. Wait, get this one, get this one. It's, they think oh, we cause trouble. <laughs> People passing by see these sort of people and they won't come in the pub. I mean, the other is just colourful. That's a bit, to me, I'm talking about my own personal opinion, is outrageous. And they're usually, like, in torn old clothes and, you know, dirty old shoes and crap. And it's, it's not a very nice element to have in your pub, so uh, I went out there. If pubs ban you, that's not going to stop you from what you Right, if I go in and somebody annoys no. me in the pub, I'm going to annoy them back. And if they get violent, I can get violent as well, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, I don't have these uh, Mohican, um, you know, the spiky tops, I don't have skinheads, which you see there's a few crept in there, but uh, they won't be there very much longer. You get a crowd of them and they're in this, they usually wind up with violence, you know, and, uh, but the others, most of these punk kids now are not really punk kids anymore. Mm. And they're all basically nice boys and girls, you know, and uh, when you've been in this business a long time, you can usually suss out who's, who's who. It's really that simple. Most people would agree that Gina looks like a nice girl, but she's about to change all that. When I first started getting into anti-fashion or alternative fashion, my reasons were to judge the way people reacted to me and by that way see if I was interested in knowing them. It was a very good way to find that you only meet tolerant people straight away. Anyone who's totally intolerant is just not going to be interested in talking to you. And also, as a girl going to nightclubs and dealing with men, it certainly screened out any man that seemed to be just interested to me as uh, a sexual figure. He had to also be interested in me as a person because I didn't look just like a pretty girl. Um, but I think we should, we should go stronger. With extreme it. styles. You might realise someone is trying to make a statement, but it's not fair of you to judge what that statement is without asking them. These people are worried about how they might be judged by the way they look. That's why they've come to the London Academy of Modelling. They're here to learn how to dress for job interviews, a real problem now that jobs are scarce. But I want you to start thinking now about the first impression you get from people when you first see them. If I rolled up to a job interview wearing just exactly what I'd like to wear, there's no way I'd ever get a job. Simple as that. It can be quite a tricky business dressing for other people, especially if you're trying to please someone who's a lot older than you are. Right. One thing I'll mention um, at the moment is earrings on girls. Um, she looks very nice wearing her two different earrings with her casual look. But as she said, she wouldn't wear that for an interview. And I wouldn't wear two different earrings, one big one, one small one, or just one earring. It could put an awful lot of employers think, off. Um, grey, yeah. I would tend to agree in this instant to wear grey socks. That would probably, because they're, they're quite thick, those white ones, aren't they? Yeah, I would say thinner socks and grey. Um, socks are very, very important for guys. They tend to... Most recently, I've like, been foremost, mostly office jobs, you know, like postal clerks, things like that. But you've got to make, you know, the right impression. If you went along without a tie or without a shirt, you know, just a sweater or something, and everyone in the office was wearing a tie, then they obviously think you didn't fit. So if you look right for the job, you know, if you look the same as everybody else, the same sort of formal dress, then you've got more chance, I think. I have had times when I've looked for a job that I purposely toned down, not just my hair, but my whole style of dress. But once you get the job and prove you can work at it, then you should be given free reign within that. And if at that stage I'm told to stop dyeing my hair different colours or something, I'd rather leave because I'm just doing waitressing jobs. It's not my whole life, my work. So it's much more important to me that I can look the way I want to. 
decoration is very important to us, as humans, I mean. And there's no reason why we don't just all walk around wearing the same dark grey jumpsuits and never do anything with your hair or face or anything and live in cubes with a bed in it. We don't exist just for comfort alone. We like all like looking at things. At a disco like the Camden Palace, you can see every style, ranging from satin to sackcloth, from rubber to rasta. But you can't always tell what these people do for a living by the way they look. I'm a civil servant. Our little department sort of known as the Deviant's Corner, because no one's really what you'd expect an office worker to look like. If people talk to me, they realise that I'm not what I seem. And also, once you smile at people, little old ladies will look at you and they'll think, oh, God, she's going to beat me up. And then if you smile at them, they'll be really sweet and they'll, they'll come over and congratulate you and tell you you look nice. I get on really well with grannies. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my best people to talk to, grannies. They because, like me. Because they think, they, they think you're fierce at first, and then when you do go up and you smile at them, and, and they obviously realise that in that smile there's no malice and you, you are quite pleasant, really. And they... They're, they... They... It's their illusion shattered. In the illusory world of the disco, you can be a bank clerk by day and a buccaneer by night. But for someone like Steve Strange, dressing up isn't just fun, it's a career in itself. I think um, a person that's involved in fashion is very fickle. A person that's got style is very clever. Because style and fashion are two different things. Person that's, a person that's got style is somebody that can carry, put whatever they like on with the way they walk, with the way they talk, and the way that they sort of act, or with the way that they become themselves with whatever they're wearing. And to carry it off is very clever, because style is something that you can't buy. Fashion is. You can buy it in any shop. Where Steve leads, the kids follow, or enough of them to make it pay. He's accepted as a style leader, but he wanted to look unusual even before he was paid for it. When I was like 13, 14, I used to have bright orange hair at school. And I was banned from school from having bright orange hair. And my mom turned around and said, well, what does bright orange hair have to do with his education? It's not affecting it in any way. It was a rebellion, because the kids at school, because I didn't get on with them. Well, they just thought I was some weirdo, but that was what it was all about. It was to say, well, here I am, you know. I am a weirdo, my hair's bright orange, so I'm here. For Steve Strange, the rebellion paid off. For the rest of us, looking unusual is a gamble that can cost you your job, get you banned from pubs, or at the very least, get you singled out as an oddity. I like it very much. But then it's always really easy to like extreme cuts in the atmosphere of a extreme hair salon. <laughs> I'm not quite so sure about it once I start walking down the street. Just seen one go up there. Sean right at the top. Absolutely awful. Look, well, I just think it looks rubbish. <laughs> it's the only answer for it. She's a very attractive girl. I mean, you know. It's terrible. It's absolutely. Yeah, I'm a bit conservative, really, I'm afraid. But, Why? Uh, just always have been, you know. Sorry. I don't feel I'm part of the normal run of the mill rat race. I don't want to be, put it like that, you know. I just feel superior to everyone, all the little sheep that are running around out there.